All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We're going to be talking about three different habitat types for turkeys today mm -hmm. using three different examples. Zach's going to cover hunting turkeys in mountainous terrain. You guys are going to cover your Indiana bird. There's going to be a little bonus information just about gaining access and yep. like using Onyx to gain permission to private pieces too. Right. And then I'm going to talk about our Tennessee hunt that we had last last year so different terrain types in indiana it was sort of that rolling farmland type habitat and then i'm going to touch on what i would consider moderate hills around like these big reservoirs and rivers and stuff like that because that's where we we hunt all turkeys a lot is close to water first i want to let you guys know we got a bunch of new merch on the website for turkey season hayden's been working hard on these designs for the last couple of weeks we just posted those over there so go check those out and at the end of this video we'll talk about where we're gonna go for the turkey tour we got her pretty lined up i think we got yeah. a busy schedule <laughs> yeah we're gonna be all over the place from one side of the country to the other three yeah. months of turkey hunting it's gonna be pretty fun yeah literally three months this year march 6th through june 6th mm -hmm. non-stop <laughs> look at him <laughs> that doesn't sound like any fun to me <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's jump into this uh we're gonna cover this tennessee hunt we were down there for about a week in early April and the type of terrain we were hunting as you can tell is mainly all woods it's all woods it's rolling hills nothing that's super super steep although we had some really steep bluffs that we had to walk down in the dark ones. well we knew we were going to be using a boat on this hunt just when we picked out the area and as you can see just on the topo lines if you're coming in from boat access like it it's not like you got to walk up a bunch of hills but it's a steep incline right when you get out of the boat and then then you once you get up top it, it's pretty smooth sailing but right and most of the timber down there i guess the habitat was pretty similar like it's just gobs of hardwood timber lots and lots of oaks yep i mean for days it seems like all the public land at least and then as you get out more to the private land then you get into more pastures and field but all the public land was just straight up hardwood yeah and there timber. was turkeys all up in these hardwoods and stuff they were roosting in in spots like this i mean there's this little peninsula that runs out here often we would see birds roosted in the tops of these little hollers or these little draws mm -hmm. like right in here around these these coves especially and we could bring that boat up into this cove and listen up around us yeah. you know we're not that's the only thing with with moderate hills like this they're big enough that if a turkey is roosted over this side and this hollow right here and we're listening from over here we may not hear them yep. yeah. so when we're cruising around in that boat we're having to stop listen to one particular cove in a few ridges and then move around to the next spot. But we repeatedly found birds roosting just off of these little points and up in the tops of these little bowls like this. Mm -hmm. Another key feature, I think, when you're hunting hills that was definitely evident in our first successful hunt, that first spot right by camp where we were at, these birds, when they're alone, they're gonna move a long ways. And they will, I've seen this numerous times hunting hills in Tennessee with Andy and David over the years too on private, public, whatever. But if a turkey's over here on this ridge per se, and you're over here on this ridge calling, obviously your instincts are going to tell you, you know, to dive down through there and get up over there with him. But if you're on turkey sign on this ridge or this ridge, and he's gobbling two ridges over and answering you regularly, don't be surprised if in 30 minutes to an hour, that bird leaves that spot and goes straight through this bottom and pops up on this ridge with you yeah. we've had that happen so many times hunting in these types of hills and that's a situation where you just kind of got to take their temperature or however you want to call it but like i mean if they're gobbling back and answering you a bunch then it might be worth it to sit tight like like we did last year yeah i mean that first bird that greg and i killed we sat there for an hour and a half didn't hear a turkey gobble but we were sitting on a ridge like this with all kinds of scratching and sign. And we just sat there most of the morning, about 8.30, I hit a crystal call, and we heard these turkeys gobble like two ridges over, way over, I mean, they were like 500, 600 yards away. But because we were sitting in all this turkey sign on this ridge, we just decided to wait it out. And eventually, those birds broke, and they came right through one holler and then through another deep holler to get up there with us and ended up killing him at 20 yards right in the middle of all that scratching that we found two hours before. 
So, I mean, you can definitely run and gun them in that type of terrain, and you can use those hills to your advantage to sneak around on birds without them seeing you. But if you're in turkey sign like that, fresh turkey sign, and you got birds gobbling within earshot, don't think for a second that they won't come through those well, real I, steep bottoms. I think your second hunt is a great example of doing what you just talked just mentioned, is we roosted that, that second bird the night before, and like, you're able to just sneak along the back side of that ridge then the next morning and pop up right on the top of the ridge where they like to pitch down that's yeah we I talked mean, about how they like to roost down in those little ravines and stuff and it seems like they that generally turkey was roosted in at the top of one of those little you, ravines you can usually expect them to pitch right up to the top of the ridge yeah he was roosted right at the top like right here and you can see there's a little bit of elevation drop right there. That's why they're roosting there is because they come up to that flat spot and then they pitch off. They can just pitch straight over onto these limbs. Doesn't because take any effort for them. No effort at all. They just hop over there. But you can see the top of this ridge is slightly higher than that. And this is not the same exact spot, but this is the same example. We came up, Greg and I, the back side of this ridge and used kind of the peak of the ridge to keep in between us and the turkey. And we were able to get within 50, 60 yards of him in the tree. Mm -hmm. And that's happened over and over in Tennessee, yeah. especially in those types of hills. So, you know, look at this topography on this map, compare it to the area where you hunt. If you're hunting hills like this in hardwoods mm -hmm. in, you know, the middle part of the country, think about these tactics and hopefully they'll help you. All right, everybody, on this part of the video, we're going to be talking about how we locate turkeys in the Appalachian Mountains. From Alabama and Georgia all the way to Maine, you're going to find solid stands of timber with pretty rugged hills and mountains and that's considered Appalachia. It can be a little bit intimidating when you're going into these areas looking for turkeys but there's certain things that we're looking for on the map that have really helped us out. The first thing that we're trying to locate when we're going to a new area is water. We're just flipping over on the topo layer on the map and we're looking for the blue line that's telling us there's a permanent stream there. They're going to be spending some amount of their day close to a water source. Another thing that we're looking for is habitat diversity. It's not always really easy to see these habitat breaks on a map, but the things that we're looking for are things like timber cuts, wetland areas that break up monotonous hardwoods, or even brushy understory that creates an edge from open hardwoods to a brushier habitat. And what I mean by the brushy habitat could be things like mountain laurel, multifloral rose, rhododendron. Those are all things that just break up uh, monotonous open hardwoods. Once we find water and habitat diversity then, we're just looking for high points around those habitat types where we can get to and try to listen for gobbling turkeys. The easiest way to locate a turkey is to hear him gobble, so it's important to find places that you can get up high and listen to a lot of different country to hopefully hear a turkey gobbling. Another thing that can be a factor in the eastern mountains is elevation. For example, if you're way up high early in the season, it may feel a little bit like winter, uh, kind of dry up there, not a lot of green vegetation growing yet. But if you drop an elevation, you might find that the trees are starting to get leaves on them, uh, the understory has a little bit of green vegetation growing up, and that may dictate where the turkeys are spending their time. So if you're hunting a new area, make sure you have a backup plan that's at a different elevation. Because if you get to a spot and you know, you're just not feeling it there, you're not hearing a lot of turkeys gobble, and it kind of feels like winter, you may be able to drive down the road, change elevations, and might be in some action. A hunt that comes to mind where we put all these strategies to use was the hunt that we had last year in Virginia. It was Ben, Colin, and myself, and we were leaving Tennessee and going in blind to Virginia. So we were looking at the map on the way there, trying to pick a place to go, and we were looking for water, looking for diversity, looking for high points, and then also looking for a piece of public land that had multiple elevations in it. That way we could chase turkeys wherever we felt like they were spending their time. We got there and pretty quickly in the hunt, we started realizing that the turkeys were gonna be at lower elevations. There was these big giant mountains that we could hunt, but way up at the top, it was pretty dry, kind of felt like winter up there, but as you dropped an elevation, there was a certain point where there was green vegetation starting to grow, there's a lot more water down there, a lot more diversity in general, and that's where we're finding most of the turkeys. On the second day of the hunt, we decided to go into this spot that we could cover a specific elevation line and hear anything down below us where most of that good turkey habitat where they were spending their time was. We really didn't expect turkeys to be above us, so we were just covering different drainages, listening down into those different pockets 
hoping to hear a turkey. If you look at this map, it sets up almost exactly the same as the spot that we were hunting. If you look down here in the bottom, you can tell that there's a permanent creek down here. There's also these smaller intermittent creeks that were holding water. And there's this logging road that kind of ran along a specific elevation right where the mountain started to kind of flatten out. Like I said, we weren't finding turkeys up high, so we weren't expecting the turkeys to be up above us. We were really just focusing on listening to all these little creek channels that were lower in elevation than us. So that morning, we just kept moving from valley to valley, listening down in there, casting our calls down into there. And we actually covered a bunch of ground and didn't hear anything, but we eventually got into a spot where we could hear down in there, heard a turkey goblin, made a quick move up and around him, tried to get on an elevation just a little bit above him, set up about 100 to maybe 150 yards from the bird, called pretty lightly to him, scratched a lot in the leaves to make him think that there was turkeys just feeding up there, and eventually he came in for a shot, and Ben missed him. Although we didn't walk out of the woods with a turkey that day, that was a great example of paying attention to things like water, habitat diversity, working a specific elevation where we felt like we could hear a lot because we were up higher than where we thought the turkeys would be. And elevation played a big role in that too. You know, we really had eliminated a whole bunch of area that was way up high where we just didn't think the turkeys were gonna be. And it paid off because we were in the action that morning. Paying attention to these things has helped us find turkeys really quickly in a lot of different states. So if you're hunting Appalachia, hopefully you can put some of these strategies to work and get on some birds this spring. All right, well, our third and final example is gonna be from our Indiana hunt last year. Greg and Aaron tagged out the first day, so they left, but after that, we had just a bunch of rain. We were hunting, the, most of the public land we were hunting was hilly, big timber type terrain. And I mean, in the rain, that just wasn't working out for us trying to strike up birds. So what we ended up doing on that hunt is we just started cruising around in the car just because it was raining every day. And most of the birds that we were seeing were out on the private land fields. And we just started trying to knock on doors and get, get permission. That started working really well too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've had great experience, especially turkey hunting, just trying to get permission. People take deer a little more serious and you have a harder time doing that. But I mean, I grew up in a similar area to this where you can cruise around and there's a lot of local farmers that they're busy during the spring, so they don't have time to get out and turkey hunt. So I've had a but, lot of success knocking on doors during the spring. Indiana, Southern Indiana and Wisconsin is fairly similar habitat. Like mm -hmm. you've got rivers winding through lots of creek bottoms that are you know, with varying degrees of habitat, lots of open fields in the creek bottoms, and mm -hmm. then right next to it, you have those big hills, yep. like on some of the public land that we were hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, but you guys were hunting field birds a lot of the time, oh, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, we we didn't have, I mean, we spent a lot of time walking around the timber, but not a lot of time striking up birds. Yeah, and, I mean, we stayed in the same area that these guys killed their birds for mm -hmm. a while and didn't have any luck striking birds and every time we'd get up to move spots and drive around we'd see birds on field so we just started pulling up on x and clicking on there and seeing where the landowner was from and then we'd go to the door and try to knock on permission or give them a call and what kind of fields like were they ag fields yep. or pastures mostly or? ag fields is what we got permission for just because a lot of that stuff along the river was just completely flat i mean they're they're farming all that stuff down along there a lot of dairy farms along the river it seemed like so they're planting corn and beans and wheat for the most part down there, it seemed like. Seems like turkeys prefer um, ag fields and pastures that are short. They're going to be in uh, a wheat field, for example, up until the point that it gets about up to the bottom of their neck. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, then, and then they're going to stop using it because I it's just too thick. I think that's what we were in that first day. It was wheat, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. And it was uh, real short. Wheat stubble or alfalfa field. They don't mind it if it's a foot taller. So, mm -hmm. I mean, no, that's fine. That's or even if, was, if even if it's a little bit taller. But once it, once it gets up to their neck where while they're pecking and feeding on the ground, they can't see predators, they mm -hmm. don't like that stuff near as much. So... Right. I guess the the main point from this hunt was just being willing to go knock on someone's door if if that's the only like if that's the only luck you're having that I definitely not I'm not afraid to do that so I mean we got permission from five or six different people I think on that trip and I, I ended up missing a turkey uh, and we had a couple of other really close encounters on that guy's property and then uh, we got permission from, th from this guy a couple days later. Are you just getting permission? to basically hunt their fields? Because some of these properties that the private landowners own are just fields, right? Mm -hmm. With maybe a fence row or two, not where much I ended for up, woods. Where I ended up killing the turkey was it was just 
the, basically the square field and that, that was all he owned because he just he farmed that he and his his home farm was down the road but he just he owned that field just for crops and he said oh yeah don't don't worry about that like go ahead but the birds were they roosting on his property as well i don't think so we didn't we didn't drive by that place till mid midday and all of a sudden we looked out there and i, I had asked that guy for permission on a different property earlier in the week and he let me go yeah. so i saw it was him so we drove to his house and I just flew back out there and the turkeys were still in the same spot so there was enough topography in the field where we could sneak down the fence line and the bird yeah, came you'd right be in. surprised how how little you need in order to get away with sneaking on turkeys you can mm -hmm. see this field's real flat and there's not a lot of roll or topography in it mm -hmm. but all you need is a very subtle little bit i mean right through the middle of this field there's a waterway of some kind and you can see that it's a little bit lower than the surrounding tops of the field if birds are out here for example you get in that waterway, you can come up to this bush and be set up within 100 yards of them, potentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we had a decoy on that hunt. We, you don't see us using male decoys a lot on public land, but since we were the only ones that had permission out there, he said we'd, we'd pop the strutter up. And in an open field like that, if you can get that out somewhere where they can see it, usually yeah. a lot of times it's going to be a pretty quick hunt. Yeah, and that's real diverse habitat. I mean, that's ideal location for turkeys. And even if you're dealing with private land parcels that are real small mm -hmm. as long as you have one of the factors that the turkeys are interested in on that property you're going to be in the game because mm -hmm. you got the river right there where turkeys are likely to roost occasionally right up against that river and they're going to obviously need the water to survive then you got big hills in the same area with hardwoods oaks acorns and mm -hmm. stuff and then you got these open fields and especially in rainy conditions mm -hmm turkeys are going to favor those fields, but they're going to use all three of those habitat types throughout the year. So, mm -hmm. and A lot of people always ask how we get a hold of these landowners, and I always like to try to go to, like if that address pops up on your phone, if the address is close by, I like to go there and just knock on the door. I'd rather do it in person than give, give them a call. Then They're not just getting a call from a random number. You can go there, shake their hand, and they can kind of see who's going to be hunting out there. But if, if they're not home, I always just leave a note with my name and number on it and uh, ask them to give me a call back. And then I'll just search their name online and sometimes you gotta do some digging, but usually, I mean, if you go through enough stuff, you can find- you Google searches, you yeah. can locate who- White pages yeah. will have their number, or maybe they'll work for a certain company. You can just kind of siphon through whatever you need to, but a lot of times you can come up with their number. Yep. All right, those are the three different habitat types we're gonna cover today. We did a similar video last year, but every year we kind of try to show you a little bit different scenario where we're finding turkeys and sort of some past hunts that were successful where we were able to find birds and eventually get a shot at them. But I guess before we wrap up this video, we should probably let everybody know where we're going mm -hmm. this spring. A lot of places. Where, where are you guys going on March 6th? We're starting off in South Florida. So we got a long drive, like 22 hours or something. To <laughs> It'll get be down a lot there. of long drives this spring. Yeah. <laughs> They're going down there to try to hunt Osceola's for the first couple of weeks, we have, which is something we have not done on THP yet. Mm -hmm. I've hunted them, but it's been a long, it's been five, six years ago. So. Yeah. And then after that, I think we're going to go meet up with the rest of you guys in North Florida, at least for a yep. couple of days. We're going to try to hunt Easterns in North Florida for a little bit of time. There's a bunch of public land up there. And then uh, we're going to go to Alabama and Georgia and hunt both of those states clear through the Easter time frame. Different areas that we've hunted in the past, though, when we've gone to Yeah, those yeah, lots of different areas. And then uh, we're going to go to Tennessee, potentially, and maybe Virginia through the middle part of April. Mm -hmm. We're going to hunt Kentucky for the first time this spring. Yeah, last year that got, that got shut down because of the COVID. COVID so. put the kibosh on that, mm -hmm. so we're... Hoping that doesn't happen again this spring we're, and we get to Kentucky this spring. We're also going to hunt some new areas in Missouri and uh, then I'm going to get married. <laughs> and then we're going to go to probably be here for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I bet you Greg will go to Nebraska and bow hunt yep. probably early. You usually do that, right, Greg? Yep, he's nodding his head back here. <laughs> um, we're going to be here. <laughs> it's, it's pumping. <laughs> We're going to be here in Iowa probably in early May sometime, and then we're going to go on a pretty long Miriam's swing in May. I think we're going to hunt Montana, Wyoming, and potentially Oregon and Washington, uh, maybe with the Born and Raised Outdoors guys. We're not sure yet. Maybe Colorado. If we're going to, yeah, in Colorado. Zach's, I think Zach's definitely going to hunt Colorado. Yeah, yeah we're going to be hunting Miriam's a good bit this spring, so I'm pretty jacked about that. Yeah, I'm excited about that, too. And then we're going to wrap up in Maine. 
which will be a new. <laughs> yeah, be a new. We're, we're driving. It's gonna be a haul. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a haul. You're gonna go from west all the way west to Maine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like 35, 40 hours <laughs> worth of driving. Uh -huh. Going to be ridiculous, but that's pretty much how the spring is shaping up right now. Obviously, all these things can change almost in an instant. Definitely changed last year. Yeah, that was when everything was it. really hitting the fan last year. It was right when the turkey tour started. So, so we're making plans. Who knows if that's <laughs> where we'll actually end up? We will be turkey hunting somewhere for we will be turkey about hunting. three months. So, yep, it's going to be a good time. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the tour here in a few weeks.